Okay, so you are saying that a protocol is an agreement, <clears throat> and I don't quite understand what kind of agreement you think can be achieved, and who is going to create that agreement. I mean, you're talking about something that is hypothetically possible, but who are the people, you know, who and who is going to do it? Mm, okay, you know, that's really getting into the resolution of things, who's going to do it. Uh, I suppose that uh, <clears throat> in understanding, in great changes in human, uh, in the human condition, there are great transitions. You see them historically when one civilization emerged and the other one as a sun set and knowledge was transferred from one country to another. You see it like with Great Britain to the United States, not so much, but you see it between China and and the West in the in the tenth century, where China was very wealthy and the the West uh, Europe was in, in poverty, and then the opposite happened, and you uh, you see all of these uh, you see uh, th these uh, changes of fortune. To your question, yeah. So who is going to be implementing uh, these kind of uh, protocols and agreements? Uh, because you know, is this like a unity uh, government, or is it like uh, you believe like one of the states in the world is going to achieve that goodness and agreement between the uh, well, the parties? That, that you, one needs to uh, reflect in these ideas, in these great transitions. Of one needs to reflect the greatest ideas of humanity, the most enlightened ideas of humanity, uh, the best practices of humanity and of administration and of, 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 of governance. So in transitional times, you want to transfer, like when you have collect seed banks, you want to collect the best seeds and the best specimens. That is actually the story told in Noah's Ark you know, a collection of specimens over a period of transition. And these things, um, these things happen a lot. And uh, now we're going through a transition into, uh, into the, the 21st century is a transition into the digital age. Not only we've gone through many transitions, but we are also going to go into the age where intelligence is going to be also digital and is also going to be very, it's not going to be necessarily uh, human, Their machines are going to be more intelligent uh, than, than, than humans. That's going to be a, a very special age. And there's also going to be probably uh, merging uh, between, uh, hu between humans and machines. You know, there seems to be that there's been a merging already for a long, long time. In fact, our consciousness is probably an emer an, an, a, an, an emergence uh, of of the artificial and the biological uh, speech. We are using an instrument. We are using our mouth, which is really a, a bio a biological, but it's also an instrument. And we use our hands with the instruments. And then we go on, and now we are using external instruments. And now not only external instruments with software and and not only that but these instruments are now have become more powerful and stronger than ourselves and are using uh, uh and and we are now aided by them so that's going to be a a, a great uh, transition who is going to who is going as you say to lead this well <clears throat> possibly theologians those are people who have a a, a an understanding of what civilization is linguist because there requires a new language where all of our best values are transferred into the digital age where our best legal structures are embedded into the way that AI will function in respect and in because and and th these these things are probably it probably academia that probably needs to be in every university an AI department which reflects a cross section of the university departments. Probably is the same with countries and the same with parliaments. Probably every organization will need to have an AI and the code and the ethics of AI. Well, theologians, philosophers, thinkers, maybe these will be the subtle differences between uh, nation states and religions.